Hello everyone, this is Ryan from Amnesty, and I'm going to show you Harun al-Rashid, or Arabia. I'll just tell you what their victory conditions I would recommend would be, their social policies I'd recommend, and also their two special units, or the special unit and a special building. At any rate, <coughs> they have trade caravans, which means you'll have plus one gold from each trade route, and oil resources provide double quantity. So essentially what that means is that you're going to have a lot of trade. That's one of their big selling points as Arabia, is that once you get to around to oil, you'll be able to trade trade oil out because generally you're going to have more than what you really need. With that being said, you can get usually money out of it, you can get strategic resources if you need it, in some cases alumina if, aluminum if you're lucky, um, and also gold if you need it as well. And then, more importantly, the plus one gold from each trade route is definitely important. That's one of the biggest things for them. Uh, Arabia is one of the biggest money makers in civilization because of that. With the Liberty Track or Social Policy, you're going to have a lot of cities, or at least you kind of want to, unless you're looking towards a cultural victory. Uh, with a lot of cities, you'll have many, many, many trade routes, which means you'll get extra gold throughout. Um, and the Bazaar, which I'll talk about a little bit later, will help you out with extra resources and you'll get more happiness. But anyway, the more money you have in this game, the more happiness you generally have. Because you'll be able to build happy buildings such as Colosseums, such as circuses if you can make them, and you know, the list goes on. But anyhow, money is really king in civilization. And Arabia makes a boatload of it. Not just internally, but externally, meaning that you can make a lot in your civilization, and all the resources that you have, you can trade it away for extra money to buy even more things, which is very important. At any rate, I'll show you the Camel Archer and the Bazaar. But before I talk about the Camel Archer and the Bazaar, I'm going to tell you the victory conditions I would recommend if you were to play Arabia. Now, number one would definitely be scientific, because you're going to be spread out many, many, many places. With that, you'll be able to have lots of science. With all the money that you're going to make as Arabia, you'll be able to buy libraries and and the like. Um, if you don't want to go that route, I would say domination is a very viable option because with the camel archer, you will be able to dominate people. You will be able to attack and run away. Attack and run away. If you have a lot of camel archers, you can take over cities even. And then if you don't like that option, you can go with either cultural or diplomatic, or sometimes go hand in hand. Diplomatic, you still can be large though. Um, and with the extra luxury resources that you're going to have, you'll be able to trade with people, which is huge, because they will like you, and you'll get money, and you'll get happiness, so you won't really need to focus too much on that, and diplomatic will work very well, but you'll want to pick patronage as a social policy to really help you out. And then lastly, um, a culture of victory is a little bit, it's not too challenging as Arabia, but you don't really have any bonuses per se to help you out with it but again having that money is a huge thing and it really does help now you won't get as much money because you're only gonna have a few cities but that's okay um, so you'll probably want to go with like a religion if you're gonna go culturally uh, that way you can get tiles to give you culture or something to that extent you don't have to go that route but it probably would help if you did and so we will now talk about the Camel Archer and the Bazaar. Alright, here is the Camel Archer. It will cost you 120 production or 240 faith. It's going to be an archery unit. Its combat is going to be 17. Its range combat will be 21. Its range will be 2 and movement is 4. This is one of the better one, better units that you can get out of some civilizations. Um, obviously you're not going to want him to be in the front lines because his combat bonus isn't that good, but his range combat combat is extremely good. If you have, let's say, for instance, long swordsmen in front of you and the camel archers are in the back, it's a very very deadly combo because the long sword, yeah, the long swordsmen can hit one of the opposing civilization's unit, weaken it. Camel archer can knock it out and just kind of kill it off and run away if they really need to. Or in some scenarios, you know, you can have a bunch of camel archers and just take out a lot of units and run away back to your borders and they won't even really be able to catch you because these guys are really really fast for the time that they're in. They replace the knight just so you know and as always knights will also well 
camel archers will be weak to pikemen, to a lesser extent spearmen, and the like. And, but that's with any mounted unit, they will always be weak to those. Anyway, the abilities that they'll have is they don't have defensive terrain bonuses, meaning that they can't, they don't do very well in forests or hills. But that's with any mountain mounted unit really, they don't generally aren't very good in that regards. They can move after attacking, meaning they can hit a target and run away. That's really, really useful in this in this case. And they may not melee attack. Obviously they cannot melee attack. They're not going to smack a guy in the face with a bow. It just doesn't make sense. So you'll want to keep these guys out of range of the one tile hexagon for a melee unit to attack. So, with that being said, I'll show you the Bazaar, which is 100 produc production to make. It'll give you plus 2 gold, plus 25% gold. It'll replace the market. It provides one extra copy of each improved luxury resource near the city. Each source of oil and each oasis provides plus 2 gold. So what does that mean in a nutshell? It means the extra resource that you're going to get, you're going to want to trade that away to another civilization for gold, your strategic resources, or most importantly, happiness resources such as things you don't have, like crabs, pearls, or some other resource that you just don't have in your empire at the moment. And uh, the each source of oil and oasis is, are very nice because if you build a city in the middle of the desert, generally there's not much benefit to it. But later on in the game, there's going to be a huge benefit because of that. You're going to make tons of money because you're near oil and oasises if there aren't any. So that's one of the reasons why Arabia tends to make so much money is the fact that their markets are just very, very good. Well, their markets are the bizarre. So at any rate, now I will show you the social policy I would recommend if you were to play Arabia. Before I show you the social policy, I'm going to show you Arabia's start bias. This is a perfect example of what you can expect out of Arabia when you play as them. Now I'm on a larger map so it does kind of make it a little bit easier for me but most people like to play on larger maps as well. Um, so I'm near kind of grasslands and definitely in the desert primarily in the desert. There's some mountains. Um, now chances are throughout this desert there's going to be oil in it as well. Um, as Arabia you're generally paired up with oil all around you. Sometimes you're on the coast. This river probably will lead out to a coast I would imagine. Um, anyway, I'll show you the social policies I would recommend if you were to play Arabia. Now, Liberty would be the best one you could choose. Why is that? It's because for a scientific or a dip, not to, uh, for a scientific or a domination victory, I almost forgot what I was thinking there. Um, Liberty is going to be the best for you because you can spread out very, very quickly. You'll get lots of science you'll be able to get the extra additional luxury resources that you need. You can trade them away for gold to buy military, to buy buildings, or just to get happiness because that's always something that you need as well. Um, if you don't want to go that route though, you want to go cultural victory or to a lesser extent a diplomatic victory. The two best is going to be tradition and patronage. And as always, tradition will give you um, good things for the small, well, for the large few cities that you have. You have one, two, three, maybe even four cities. Tradition will help you out with it. It'll make them grow. It'll make extra happiness out of your capital. Um, and then patronage. Why is this one good? Because if you're going for a diplomatic victory, you need city-states on your side as well as other you know, AI to help you out. But patronage will increase your reputation with the city-states. And it's very, very important. So you'll definitely want to grab that one. Um, and then also... As far as getting the AI on your side, you won't really need to worry too much because so as long as you have enough natural re well, luxury resources and the bazaar to go with it, you'll probably have enough resources to trade with certain AI to keep friends with somebody and possibly even a defensive pact. So that way you don't really get attacked quite as much. So that's what I would recommend. At any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed my video here of Arabia. Please rate, subscribe, and comment, and thanks for watching.